Hello again, I'm Sergeant Major Dave Brown. Welcome to United We Stand, music to connect us. Every March, trombone students, teachers, players, and professionals gather right here at Brooker Hall for our annual American Trombone Workshop. Over the years, we've had some incredible performances, and today we open the vault and take a look back at the most memorable moments. So join us as we hear the highlights and meet the people from our annual American Trombone Workshop. Welcome, Dr. Natalie Mannix. It's great to see you again and catch up. Thanks, it's great to see you too. Long time, we go way back. Yeah, absolutely. So before we get into your performance today, I wanted to talk a little bit about your experience in the military. How many years and what did you do while serving on active duty in the Navy? Yeah, so I was in the United States Navy Band in Washington, D.C. for a little over nine years, about nine and a half years. And in the Navy Band, we rotate between playing in the concert band and then playing in the ceremonial band, usually about every other week. So we got to experience everything. And we did full honor funerals. We went on national tours. We played at the White House and the Pentagon, um, ceremonies all over the D.C. area and did a little traveling as well. Cool. So you went on to teaching positions at Towson University and now serve as professor of trombone at the University of North Texas. Um, I'm curious to know, how do you talk to your students about these career opportunities from the perspective and the position of someone who both served on active duty and now is a veteran? Yeah, I encourage my students. I, I mean, I think I'm the biggest fan of students auditioning for military bands, and I try and get everybody that is qualified to win a job in the military to consider auditioning. It's an amazing way to make a living playing your instrument. And even if you don't stay 20 years, you can still use it as an amazing stepping stone to another job or another career. The people in the bands are very well respected and very hireable when they get out in many different positions. Yeah, excellent. Well, let's get into the piece a little bit. Let's talk about Dorothy Gates' new work. Uh, how did you come across this piece? So I've been a huge fan of Dorothy Gates' music for a while, and I was always asking her, so do you have a piece for trombone yet? She had other pieces written for brass, and she writes for the Salvation Army in the New York Staff Band. So she's very experienced. She was a trombone player. She actually went to the University of Michigan before, a um, few years before I was there. So um, while researching pieces by women composers, I came across her music, really loved it, kept asking her, okay, if you ever write something for trombone, let me know. And as soon as this piece was premiered, she told me about it and I was really excited. And it was originally premiered for trombone and chamber orchestra and I loved it so much that I convinced her to reorchestrate it for the performance at ATW for trombone and wind symphony. That's wonderful. It's a really great piece. Um, what were some of the most challenging aspects in preparing the work? Wow. Yeah, the opener is tough. It's like right out of the gate, really tough. Some big leaps and harmonic slurs. Um, and it just, it's, it's nerve wracking. So that was one of the, the things I had to practice the most is just the opening 16 bars. Um, another tough thing is the third movement is a jazz waltz and I'm not a jazz trombone player. I always like music that is loosely influenced by jazz. So I really like the style, but it was a little out of my comfort zone. In fact, there is an optional improvised cadenza in that movement, which I didn't optionally improvise at all. I just played the notes on the page. So, um, so that was challenging. And I would say probably in the second movement, the climax of the whole movement sits on a high D. <laughs> and it's just not a great note on the trombone all the time. And so those were probably the hardest technically challenging things about this work. So speaking about that second movement, that's, which is what we're going to be featuring on today's broadcast, yeah, I really felt like it was the heart and soul of the piece. Um, you know, and there's there's lots of technical demands of the soloist, as you mentioned, in the outer movements. Uh, but this one, as you said, it really does sing. You know, and I think in many ways, movements like this are far more difficult to master because of the simplicity as opposed to some of the technical fireworks. Um, how did you approach uh, this particular movement in terms of what you wanted to say musically? Sure. Well, the piece is a little programmatic, so that helps. Um, it was written for uh, a Swedish diplomat and secretary general of the UN, a former secretary general. I'm not going to 
do his justice to his name, so I won't say it here. But um, and he was a very spiritual person, dedicated to service, and he was actually responsible for adding a meditation room to the UN building. And so I just kept that in my heart, you know, that that spirituality, that dedication, and um, really just tried to immerse myself in the melody. And that's something I've always enjoyed doing anyways. It's always the easiest music for me to be musical with, is just a beautiful melody. And she did a great job writing for it. Yeah, service and dedication. Those are two themes that we relate to as military musicians. Sure, yeah, exactly. Well, hey, Natalie, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, and I know you as someone who feels strongly about highlighting the work of female composers. I'm so glad that you brought this piece to the workshop. Uh, I think it's a tremendous addition to the trombone solo repertoire. I really enjoyed it, the live performance back in 2018, and, and I know our audience is gonna enjoy it today as well. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Chris.
Welcome, Mark Davidson. Uh, Mark has been the principal trombonist of the Utah Symphony since 2015, after joining that orchestra in 2013 as the second trombonist. Mark, it's really great to see you, and thank you so much for joining us here in the digital space that we're all so used to at this point. Uh, thank you for having me, Chris. Uh, pleasure to see you, pleasure to be here. Uh, glad everyone over there is so busy and staying so safe and healthy. And uh, it's what an interesting time we're in. I'm glad we're able to you know, communicate in this facet here. And thank you, it's great to be here. Yeah, absolutely, it's great to catch up. So today we're featuring you from a performance that took place back in 2018, but this wasn't your first time at our workshop. Uh, your first experience was at the Eastern Trombone Workshop as a student. So what year was that and what do you remember about that experience? Oh, well, uh, the, the workshop was such a long-standing festival that probably every trombonist should be attending for sure at some point in their musical life. And it was nice to be featured uh, at the festival that I had such respect and admiration for and have always had such continue to have so much respect and admiration for and it was just an honor to to be a part of the week and uh, yeah I, I think being there as a student and just you know seeing all these artists play and you're working things out and you know playing for whoever you can and it's such a great resource to be able to have so many people come together that are that care so much about the same thing and uh, you know, share ideas. So it was great to be there as part of that, to uh, be a sharer uh, that, uh, that week. So yeah, it was a lot of fun, I had a lot of fun. Great, well, let's talk about some music. So you were featured with the US Army Orchestra performing Nino Rota's Concerto. Uh, why did you choose this particular piece? Well, when you had asked me uh, to uh, participate, I, I had asked, I was curious what the, what pieces hadn't been performed. Uh, you know, there's been so many wonderful players, that, fabulous musicians that have, have performed all the repertoire. I didn't uh, want to, you know, repeat repertoire that's already been played. So the, the Rota came up as one, I think that was suggested as one that uh, hadn't been played maybe before at the festival. And, and so that made it an easy choice. Um, I had not performed the Rota Concerto at that point. So uh, it, was, it, was just, uh, it was just a match right away. So it was, it was great to, to get there. Yeah, that's interesting is considering that it's such a staple of the trombone repertoire, I was surprised to go back through our records and see that we hadn't actually performed it in uh, over a decade. So it was great to have, yeah. to have you bring that piece back to the stage. What were some of the challenges in preparing the piece or, or even its, in its performance? What were some of those challenges for you? Well, I think each piece takes on its own journey when preparing and then at the same time, the process for preparing, you know, anything is essentially, you know, very similar. Uh, you know, like any performance preparing, I, I did a lot of score study and lots of recording and performing the piece with the piano accompaniment version. So it was as familiar as it could be uh, for the performance. And um, yeah, for something for, you know, these types of performances, you want, you want, you know, months to really be able to digest the piece and, and get to know it and uh, really uh, have a story uh, that you, you know, that's personal to you, but then also connects to the composer. Uh, and you know what their intentions were with the piece and really being able to connect anything that you want to convey as an artist but you know connecting it with you know uh, what were the intentions by the composer that's great well hey mark thank you so much for joining us today it was great to catch up with you uh, and i can tell you after having organized this workshop for over 10 years now there are certain performances that stick out in my memory as being exceptional and this was certainly one of them the way you're able to sing through the instrument with that amazing sound and like you say the wonderful interplay between you and the different sections of the orchestra it, it was amazing i really enjoyed this performance uh, and i and i know our audience today is going to enjoy it too so thanks very much for joining us wow thank you so much chris thanks for having me thanks for uh just, just th that was such a great week and uh i feel all the same and uh all the respect for for the workshop and and for you and all the work you're doing and uh, I can't wait to come back and and uh, and be a part of uh, I don't know the, the the wonderful things you guys are working on so thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 
On behalf of our leader and commander, Colonel Andrew Esch, thanks for joining us today. If you'd like to learn more about our American Trombone Workshop, check out our website, usarmyband.com. You can also visit our YouTube channel and binge watch all of our workshop performances over the last several years. And until we're all back together again, stay safe, stay strong, and stand united.